Welcome to Anti-Chef, everyone, and this is going to be the last video of 2020. And it has been a year to remember, you know, outside of the kitchen, but also uh, back here as well. I've made quite a few desserts this year, so I thought it would be, you know, only fitting to pick up where I left off last year. Last year, meaning I made this video where I ranked every dessert I have ever made, ever. You know, starting at the very beginning and working my way all the way to the end of 2019. I gave them all a grade, you know, A, B, C, D. There were some Fs. And it's only fair for me to do the same for all the desserts I made for 2020. It's all honesty here, you know, sometimes I shine, sometimes I suck. Now we're gonna start at the beginning of the year in a world uh, before lockdowns, before COVID. Here we go. This is Milk Bar Grasshopper Pie, uh, another recipe from Christina Tozzi. This is one where I just opened the cookbook one day and went, uh, I'm gonna make this. I picked something just because it looked uh, interesting looking with a, like a cool name to it, Grasshopper Pie. The thing isn't overly complicated, although you know when you get it in my hands, it turns into some sort of an adventure. This is the one where I baked a full pie in the oven and I took it out and realized that I was missing a crucial part to the recipe. Send help. So I had to gut the pie, which was uh, filled with this brownie filling. I took it all out and put in the proper part to the pie and then I added the browning filling back on top. Somehow this all worked out in the end and it was super tasty. And it was one of those desserts that tasted better to me when it was cold out of the fridge. So I'm gonna give this thing an A. Good start. Magnolia Bakery's Vanilla Cupcakes. These were the best cupcakes I've ever had in my life. I've never had the actual Magnolia Bakery cupcakes I've had their banana pudding, which I've also made on the show once before, but we'll get to that later. Uh, these cupcakes, I mean, it's a straightforward recipe, easy to make and delicious to eat. The cupcake portion of it was like super moist and the icing on top, I thought that I did a really good job with that as well. I feel like I've had my fair share of cupcakes in my life, so to say that they're the best I've ever had, I think that means something. A, Starbucks Cake Pops. This is um, Starbucks Cake Pops. Uh, do you know what they are? Cake Pops or <laughs> cake on like a popsicle stick. Or in my case, I used um, straws because I didn't wanna. Uh, they sell them at Starbucks and they're in like the display case. I was just curious what they were. And it's just quite literally cake on a popsicle stick. So um, honestly, I forgot I made this. <laughs> I honestly don't think I'd ever make it again, and if I didn't have this video, I would probably forget that it even exists. Sorry, it was really good. It was good. If you love cake pops, then all the power to you, but uh, for me, I think I just prefer like a slice of cake. It has nothing to do with the quality of what I made. It has nothing to do with the idea of cake pops. Maybe it does, but it's just for not, it's not for me. So I'm gonna give it a B minus. Next. Every time I try to make one of these cakes, I think to myself, why am I doing this? What the f am I doing? <gasps> no! This thing is turning into some ugly cake. Oh my God. No. I don't know what the f that means. I got it all over my f shirt. The unicorn cake. I've been seeing this around for a couple of years and I thought it was ridiculous but I also thought it'd be really funny if I tried to make it. Now there's this thing that's going around in the last few years that I've noticed where people just make cakes out of everything that make them look like realistic objects or other pieces of food. Like I saw one that was a Big Mac and then you cut into it and it was not a Big Mac, it was a cake. And I saw another one that was like Bruce Willis's head from Die Hard and then you cut into it and it's not Bruce Willis's head, it was a cake. My unicorn head does not look real, so um, that doesn't really have anything to do with what I just said. Uh, my unicorn head looks like a four year old made it. But God damn it, I tried. I had to roll up this unicorn horn. <laughs> I also had to make um, like the colorful mane with all the pretty colors. Uh, I had to make a unicorn like face. I struggled with every part of this cake. 
I understand it'd be fun for a little girl's birthday, but for me to be making it in my own home uh, with no one around and no one to share it with, and uh, well, you start asking questions about life, deep questions too. There was nothing magical or unicorny tasting about it. It was just like an ordinary cake. And then like the unicorn horn and the ears, I didn't eat them because fondant to me doesn't look that appetizing. So this was one of those videos that I'll always remember until the day I die. Would I ever make it again? Absolutely not. I'm gonna give a C. No. A C minus. This is the opera cake. This is something that I found out through MasterChef and Gordon Ramsay says it's like something that only five year top patisserie chefs attempt to make or something. And naturally I was like, well, I wanna make it. I didn't find all the parts to this cake very complicated. You kind of just layer it like you would like a milk bar layer cake, right? One layer, then all the fixings, and then another layer. And then now there's two things that I struggled with. Firstly was like the chocolate ganache. It has to be shiny on top. You pour it on top and it's glistening. And uh, I just can never get that. And I need to work on my ganache games. And on the very top, you're supposed to like write out opera with chocolate ganache. And it's gotta be like a nice cursive to it. I've never had good cursive. So I wasn't gonna get that on the first go. In the video, I make it seem like I only screwed up writing the opera like a couple times, but in reality, it took me like five or six or seven or eight times to get it right. I just turned off the camera and pretended. Anywho, I think I'm gonna give myself an A minus. Now in March, I made the move from Brussels to London. So there's a kitchen switch. I'm turning this into a bit of a tradition, but with each move I make into a new kitchen, because I move a lot, I try to make macarons. Tried three times. The first attempt was the worst food I've ever made ever. And the second try was a it was a fine attempt, but still miles away from what they should be. This was my third attempt here. So I attempted the Italian meringue method. It was like boiling up sugar and having it be a certain temperature, then adding it very slowly into your like whipped up egg whites. So I didn't have my piping bags. I lost them during the move. Where the hell are the piping bags? Thought I saw the piping bags in this drawer here. So I had to use a stupid Ziploc bag. This is a lesson. This is a lesson. lesson. To pipe my cookies onto the baking sheet. Color around the edges looks a little too burnt, maybe? I don't know, they've turned brown a little around the edges. They're not perfect circles and they're a bit too um, girthy. Now for a third attempt and seeing how far I've come since that abysmal F, I'll take it. I'm gonna give them a B. Chocolate blackout cake. It's like a very dense and rich chocolate cake. And it's all chocolate. Like there's no other colors involved but brown. I mean, sometimes I look at the cake and I think the chocolate crumbs like all over the outside of it look a bit silly, but that's what it should look like. So. Um, the cake itself was like a delicious chocolate cake. I don't know, there's not much to say about a delicious chocolate cake other than that it's delicious. So I'm gonna give this blackout cake an A. My grading system is a bit out of whack. It just doesn't make sense that an opera cake gets A minus and it loses points because the ganache wasn't shiny enough. This cake didn't have the same level of difficulty, but it's getting a better grade. See the problem? Dominique Ansal's peanut butter crunch cake. And Dominique Ansal is a famous like pastry and dessert chef. He invented the cronut and we'll get to that shortly. But let's focus on this dish here. This one did not come without its um, difficulties. It's just kind of struggling this day. Um, not to say that I, I failed or anything. I was able to, you know, dust myself back off after each struggle, but um, I still struggled. Okay, so I am most definitely not happy with what I've done here because the consistency is not matching his at all. This does not look appetizing or beautiful the way he's got it. He's got it nice and smooth. Mine is kind of just, I don't know, you'd, it's what you'd expect from me. So I had to rework that and fix it up and I was able to figure that out. I think it's working. 
That's exactly how it should look. That's exactly how it friggin' should look. Look at that. Nice, smooth, runny. And then again with the shiny chocolate ganache finish to the cake. This one required one as well and I wasn't able to figure that out. So I have a really matted, kind of ugly looking finish to the cake. It's a shame too because the cake was really coming together. To sum up what biting into that tastes like, I, I, I could say uh, it's like a Reese's peanut butter cup. Uh, giant, it's like a giant Reese's, it's made me blind. Because it does not have the shiny, glossy look to it, I'm gonna have to be especially harsh for this one because I do think it affects the overall appearance of the cake. There's no denying that. I have to give this peanut butter crunch cake a B plus. Moving on. I remade the Milk Bar Crack Pie. This is one of the first desserts I ever made ever before I knew anything about anything. I didn't know how to bake. I didn't know desserts. I never really ate desserts a lot. And then I made the crack pie a few years ago and I left out very important ingredients and I also just skipped steps because I didn't think they were important. Don't do that. That was, that was silly of me. I shouldn't have done it. I've had the actual crack pie a few times since then and I know the taste. The key ingredient you need to make like an authentic tasting crack pie is this thing called uh, corn powder, which is grinded up uh, freeze-dried corn. You can have it taste delicious, but without this, I think this is like the million dollar ingredient to make it taste like a true milk bar crack pie. I have so much left over of this. I wish I could just share it, but uh, there it is. The thing about crack pie is um, it's dangerous. When you have one in the house, it's like you always know it's in the house and I always went hunting for it. I would hide it in the freezer and I still went and ate it frozen because it tasted good frozen too. There was a couple complaints in the comment section of this video saying that the filling was a bit runnier than it should be because it's not supposed to be runny. And yeah, okay, when I had the real thing, I agree, it wasn't runny, but it didn't take away from the taste at all. Maybe just the appearance of it. I'm giving myself an A this time. My attempt at recreating Krispy Kreme donuts from home. I don't know if this is something that you can like perfectly match exactly at home. There's probably like special ingredients involved and they're doing stuff behind the scenes that we don't know what's going on. This was an okay effort. You know, it honestly it didn't take my breath away. I don't know how close I actually got. I haven't had Krispy Kreme donuts in years and I know for certain that this didn't taste exactly like them and I probably could have done a lot better job on both the donuts and the icing. I thought they could have been better made. I was trying to like eat them the next day and the donuts had hardened up and the icing was starting to crack and fall off. So I have to keep that into consideration too. These Krispy Kreme donuts could have been a lot better. I'm gonna have to give myself a C, the cronut. Another recipe from Dominique Ansel. It's a croissant and it's a donut hybrid. And this recipe, when you read it, will scare you. There's like page after page. I think there's like six pages involved in this recipe, maybe more. Now this thing is supposed to take like three days to make. It took me, yep, it's three days later six days to make. There was a few London like summer heat waves where it just got really hot. There's no air conditioning in London. So when you're on the top floor of a flat, your kitchen's at the very top, the heat is just like stuck in here. It's really hard to make something like the cronuts. You need to laminate your pastry, which is like you take your cold butter that is like flattened out and you put it on top of your dough and then you roll it into the dough and then you like roll your dough over again and then roll it again. You put it in the fridge overnight and then you repeat the next day and the next day. It's supposed to take like three days. <laughs> I never got to the next step because while I was waiting for my dough to rise at room temperature, the butter in them melted completely. I blame myself. I blame the heat wave. To spend that much time on something and for it to just be ruined by the temperature in this room. Anyway, I had to redo the whole process and try again. And on day six, I was able to get to the finish line. I will say that my cronuts in the end looked 
in between, more so like a donut than a croissant. You could still see a little croissant in there. The finished product to me was as good as anything I've ever made. Holy sh**. Whether or not it was a croissant, a cronut, a donut, whatever it ended up being, I loved it. I loved everything about it. It is something that I will try again one day and, and see if I can do better, but um, <laughs> not anytime soon. Biting into one of these things, it tastes like an A+. It was a bit off in the appearance, a B. So that equals a A-. This is the Milk Bar Dolce de Leche Layer Cake. At this point now, I've made several, several of these Milk Bar Layer Cakes. How many exactly? I think I list them off. I made the birthday cake, the popcorn cake, the German chocolate jimbo layer cake, the pumpkin pie cake, the malt cake, the peppermint bark cake. Well, today I wanna make the dolce de leche cake. This is my seventh milk bar layer cake. If you're, you know, on the seventh turn, you get the hang of it. It's all pretty repetitive. It's just switching up the flavors. And this one's all about dolce de leche, which was like all learning experience for me because I had never used or even knew what dolce de leche was before this. So it was cool to figure that out. It was one of the better tasting ones. I'd put it at the top tier of milk bar layer cakes, but the appearance of it, um, <laughs> Again, it was the heat wave. I blame the heat wave. When you take the cakes out of the freezer, you have to let them thaw at room temperature. I guess you could probably do it in the fridge, but I had it out in the kitchen today, and it's like freaking hot in here. And uh, as soon as I started to unwrap that cake, it all just started spilling out. It tasted like an A, but appearance-wise, it's like a B. So I'm gonna have to give myself a B plus. It is just completely dark now. The Russian honey cake. I mean, my finished cake was like this high off the ground. It was really, really big, but it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be like half that. I was following a recipe that was super confusing. You can't just introduce things into a recipe without letting me know what they are. I think I did okay following along, trying to make heads or tails of this recipe. Um, I'm throwing this recipe under the bus this time. like. Okay, I've taken the fall too many times and this time it's this recipe. I do not trust what's going on over there. The recipe wanted me to bake these like little thin layers of cake for like a total of 12 minutes. My intuition's like, well, 12 minutes is way too long. You wanna do it for six minutes because it's just so thin, it's gonna bake really quickly. There was no mention in the recipe about how you're supposed to over bake each layer of cake. I guess I can't blame the recipe for this part because this is all me stacking and layering the cake with the icing during the summer heat wave. Uh, it doesn't mix well. Oh my God. Okay, I gotta get this in the fridge. No! You have to press on these cake crumbs onto the sides of the icing, uh, but I ran out of crumbs. So this whole thing kind of looks unfinished and really a bit of a mess. From the top and from one angle, it looks okay. But on the other side, if I showed you the other side, not okay. I do like the look of it when you like take the slice out though. That looks cool. The cake itself was awesome. And when I gave some to my wife, Christy, she would nuke it in the microwave for like 30 seconds and the icing just like melted completely and the cake was super soft and we enjoyed the cake even more so. There's so many things going on here. Authenticity and appearance or taste. <sighs> I'm gonna give it a B. So like the Krispy Kreme donuts, I tried to recreate Twinkies at home this year. I've only had Twinkies a few times and I think they were rather unremarkable. So these were great, they, they tasted great. These things were good, they were good. I mean, Twinkies are Twinkies, I mean, I guess they're not that exciting. Imagine biting into a Twinkie, except it's, it's fresh. I don't know what else I could do with this. It's just a Twinkie. I'm gonna give myself a B. The island cake is one of those cakes that looks like something. This one looks like an island and it became like a trendy cake sometime in the summer this year. I don't know how memorable it will be in the future. Will it be something that people talk about years from now? I know I'll always remember my island cake haunting my nightmares. I was following along to this video that made it seem, you know, fairly simple and attainable. 
<laughs> but once I got started and past the initial easy parts, I realized pretty quickly that maybe the video I'm following has cut out a lot of the issues that they were having making it. There's a lot of creative parts to this like you had to be an artist at times like trying to like use food coloring to paint to make your cake look like it was rocks i had to make this like jello color it blue and then add it into the cake ring which was holding my cake i tried like half a dozen different methods to keep the jello inside the cake ring and not have it leak but i couldn't figure it out i feel like the video i was following along to was leaving out rather important details about how this may not even work. The jello part of the cake was just completely flavorless and it was really thick and it wasn't like, it wasn't like well-made jello. Something went wrong or maybe that's just the recipe. Maybe it's just a novelty recipe and it's not supposed to be good. I don't know. There's like this conundrum of like, what should I rate something that you know, is more just for show than for taste. Because it looks like an island to me, but it tasted like crap. What do you grade it? I'm giving it an appearance of a B plus, and for taste, a D. It was around this point in the year where uh, I just went all in on cakes, and it was within a few weeks of each other, I was just making cake after cake after cake after cake. The thing with my show is I try to eat as much as I can out of each thing that I make. And when all you're making is cakes, it does something to you up here and right here. The Mirror Glaze Galaxy Cake. A lot of the pressure for this cake comes at the very end when you have to pour all this glaze at roughly the same time so that it's the perfect consistency that it's gonna stay on the cake and not be too runny and fall off, but not be too sticky and not turn into what you need it to turn into. The one thing that bothers me is just in the heat of the moment, I didn't remove the plate from underneath the cake when I was pouring all the glaze on top. So everything was getting trapped around the plate and not falling and making like this very nice smooth edge around the cake. So, th you know, that's a brain fart. There's a lot going on with this cake. I don't know how I can like properly give it a grade because the cake itself was rather moist and delicious but it's covered with this rubbery jello mirror glaze on top, which isn't that appetizing to eat, but it does kind of look like a galaxy. Don't be too generous. B minus. The Magnolia Bakery banana pudding, which is like, I've had the real thing and it is so, so, so good. This recipe is really easy to follow. It's really easy to understand and you can make it at home is providing you have the right ingredients. Bada bing, bada boom. I made it a bit more challenging for myself because I wanted to make my own pudding just to up the ante. But besides that, simple stuff. And it tasted identical to the actual Magnolia banana pudding. So I'm gonna give this recipe an A. The Japanese matcha green tea mill crepe cake. My first attempt at really, really trying to make a good crepe. As well as my first time using matcha, which is like that Instagram friendly green tea powder that everyone likes to use for their desserts to make them look very photogenic. It's just very dense, heavy crepe cake that was bitter because of the matcha. I didn't really like this one at all. I don't know what's going on with it. This wasn't for me. I'm gonna give this a, a D. Chocolate Oreo cake. This cake right here, maybe it's up there with the crack pie as being one of the most unhealthiest things I've ever made, I think. Look at this cake. <laughs> the thing was beautiful, but also terrifying. It was tough to keep the icing on the cake, but if there was no heat wave, I think it would have been pretty easy to make it if you were ever allowed to see people again. Uh, you could bring it to the party and you'd be the star of this party. It's one of those cakes. So you could have a small slice of it and you just be in heaven. Actually, you know what? I shared it with the neighbors downstairs so let me see if I can find their review of the cake. Delicious. Oh my God, the slices are so huge. I don't think I could physically eat them. I demolished one slice. Okay, that's what they said about the cake. One thing I was really trying to master with this cake is that chocolate drip. I kind of did it, but it 
the whole appearance of this cake could be much more refined. So if I was looking at this cake on a slice by slice basis, it'd get really high grades. If you're looking at it like that, I'm gonna give it a B plus. After that many cakes and desserts, I've needed to like shift gears and refocus a bit onto other things. <laughs> I started the series Jamie and Julia, which is like French cooking, following along to Julia Child recipes. There's desserts in the cookbook, but there's also a lot of savories. Rather than just island cakes and unicorn cakes, now I can try to teach myself like how to make dinner. <laughs> anyway, I have made a few desserts since shifting gears. Uh, let's get into those, shall we? Welcome to another episode. Crepe Suzette, or Crepe Suzette. Everything about this was so, so, so good. Everything. I was trying to make like a proper French crepe and then you melt this like orange butter in a frying pan, cover it with brandy in an orange liqueur. I was using Cointreau and then you light it on fire. <laughs> The recipe itself is obviously impressive, but the fact that I was able to pull it off and have it be as good as it could be is just an A plus. Best thing I made this year, I'm calling it right now. Nothing but net, moving on. Tart tatin, which is an upside down apple pie. I admire how simple this dessert was. Sliced apples, pie crust, butter and sugar. Flip it upside down, bada bing, bada boom. Everything about it was spot on. I wouldn't change a thing. I'm gonna give it also an A plus. And that my friends is it. I mean, I could review the gingerbread house I just made. I mean, you can see that we've been enjoying it. I think that speaks for itself. I don't really know if it's a dessert, so let's just put it over here. My least favorite dessert of the year, Japanese matcha green tea milk crepe cake. My favorite dessert of the year, Julia Child's crepe Suzette. Both crepes, wow. That's the end of that. That's the end of 2020. We made it. Happy New Year, everyone. Thank you so much for your support, for your likes, for your comments, for your shares, for your messages, for everything this year. I may not respond to all the comments, but I definitely read all the comments and I love every single one of them, except for the bad ones that I don't love. I'll see you guys in 2021. Bye. Bye. I have nowhere to go. Bye. Thank you.